Ladies and gentlemen, we need to have a chat. This is Lucius Cole, and today we're going to be counting down our top picks for the top 10 conservative YouTubers. And they take the skin, Joe. You see how it works? Now you, you know you're freaking why. me out with this voice. No, no, but see, it's a southern loving voice. For this list, we're going to be breaking down top conservatives who focus their content almost exclusively on YouTube using metrics such as viability, influence, and entertainment. As always, you can catch me on Twitter and Parlor at Lucius Cole. Give me a follow and let me know who is on your top 10 list. Number 10, Viva Fry. Booyah. Viva Fry Montreal litigator turns YouTuber. All right. In some backwards way, a man who originally got his start going viral by having a squirrel steal his camera has now carved out a YouTube niche doing what he calls vlogs. V L A W G S. Where he breaks down current events through the lens of a lawyer. This man isn't afraid to tackle big issues from a mostly conservative perspective although not openly stating such. This is not how laws should be passed in a free and democratic society. With over eight years on YouTube, he's grown to over 300,000 subscribers and has been actively sharing his common sense approach to law with the world. Number nine, Sargon of Akkad. Hello, and welcome to my channel. I go on the internet as Sargon of Akkad, and I chose this name because I'm a lover of history and the lessons it can teach us. Too much is being done in the name of legality instead of morality. There are too many bad arguments being passed off as truth. If it's good enough for the 2010s, it's good enough for the 2020s. Carl Benjamin grew to prominence in the YouTube space in 2010 under the faceless name of Sargon of Akkad. His original claim to fame was during a movement known as Gamergate which highlighted far-left radicals and neo-feminists infiltrating the gaming industry to propagate a message of division. This eventually leading to a series of spats with well-known anti-racist Anita Sarkeesian. If you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And like, I need to give you attention because you're a garbage human. While he promotes himself as an English liberal, he ran in the 2019 European Parliament election with the UK Independence Party, which had rose to prominence years earlier under the leadership of Nigel Farage. Since then, he posts regularly on his channel, Akkad Daily, covering worldwide social issues and calling out the hypocrisy of the left who are trying to deconstruct the categories of man and woman and then down right way to sex. And so now sex, biological sex, is no longer a real thing. Here at number eight is the officer Tatum. I don't want to believe what other people tell me because sometimes through media, through other people, it can be very uh, disingenuous. Brandon Tatum breaks the mold for what most mainstream media sources consider a conservative. As a former police officer and SWAT team member who started posting videos in 2016 about his support for then-presidential candidate Donald Trump, he grew exponentially in popularity after challenging the narrative of white privilege in the United States. How your success in life is dependent upon you. It's dependent upon how much you are you willing to put up with, how much are you willing to take into account, and how much you're willing to pursue your dreams and your goals. I don't want to hear you blatantly call people and say they have white privilege. His bare bones philosophy of evidence-based reasoning has led to a variety of viral videos on police brutality and that he holds almost a diametrically opposing view to what corporate media propagates. Why, 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 why people of color can't, can't, can't get their stuff together? His unconventional yet antithetical approach has led to a core fan base consisting of over 1 million subscribers. Number 7, Sticks Hexenhammer 666. So yeah, you should definitely subscribe and you should go watch some videos. You know, it's better than anything you're going to see on TV, so <laughs> trust me, it's a good time. Tarl Warwick, who goes by the name Sticks, is a theological occultist turned political analyst. 
his origin story centered around a video called Why I Left Christianity and Became a Satanist. I came to a startling conclusion. I came upon the information that the Gospels were written up to 40 or 50 years after Jesus died. In the process, writing dozens of books on the occult and theology. His profound knowledge on theism and mysticism gives him an edge in connecting political topics and the religious ties therein. He has since left the movement of Satanism and posts regularly on political, cultural, and theological events. Satanism is a radical ideology of self-preservation and indulgence. It's atheistic in form, it doesn't have anything to do with worshipping the devil, and the vast majority of self-proclaimed Satanists you'd ever meet do not believe in Satan. As of this video, he's well on his way to 500,000 subscribers. Number 6, The Conservative Twins. Let's start the show. <laughs> we got a good show for y'all today, man. <laughs> We got a damn good show. The Conservative Twins is a tale of two brothers who took the leap from the self-development sphere to the arena of politics. Originally known as Ask Hodge Twins, they gave advice to their audience on how to navigate life. It's cold out here, ain't it? It's a whole bunch of snow, ain't it? <laughs> hey, the conversation, hey, man. Yeah, man. See, that's a golden opportunity. In a crazy turn of events, they risked their reputation and their fan base by creating a new channel by the name of Conservative Twins, where they focus on culture, current events, and politics. Their comedic energy and unapologetically masculine nature has boosted their credibility for a world that has become way too soft. I think they don't even want to be African American. <laughs> they want to be African. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to break it to you. But you got a simple fix for that. You know you can uh, leave. <laughs> Number five, the quartering. I think I'm changing it to the quartering this weekend because it feels like everybody's like pulling everyone in every other direction. And what I want to do is kind of like reassemble the human body here. Jeremy Hambly, who goes by the tag the quartering, is a disgruntled gamer who speaks out against social justice warriors woke media, and online censorship. Originally coming into the YouTube space by the name of Unsleeved Media, he found himself embroiled with Hasbro, who owns the infamous card game Magic the Gathering, where he faced backlash from comments against tournament organizers and has received a lifetime ban from competitive play. If you want to enjoy Magic the Gathering, just stay off of the Magic Twitter sphere. It's a bunch of morons. After distancing himself from Hasbro, he ventured onto a new endeavor, The Quartering, where he does cultural commentary on games, comics, and world events. His influence has made him a target of multiple corporate media attacks, but he has continued to triumph through adversity on his way to almost 1 million subscribers. Ha 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 ha! Your livelihood's at risk, ha ha! Uh, number four, guys, uh, Ben Shapiro. Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... And when... And when... It, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. Explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks and black kids in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain If it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened. Ben Shapiro has been owning the libs on college campuses for years. And in case you didn't know, his wife's a doctor. He's often quoted for his infamous line, Facts don't care about your feelings. Ben is well known for his ability to debate, torching TV pundits the world over. I'd really like to hear your policy prescriptions 
for what we should do about guns. Because you say that you respect the Second Amendment, and you know, I brought this here for you Mm -hmm. so that you can read it. It's the Constitution. And I, I would really like for you to explain to me what you would do about guns that would have prevented what happened in Sandy Hook. The Ben Shapiro Show is part of a network of podcasts hosted on the conservative news site, The Daily Wire, where it has grown to the top of the charts in podcast circles. Ben's focus is primarily on U.S. politics, where his two times speech speed would make even the greatest rappers swoon. Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hold up. I said certified freak seven days a week. Number three, Steven Crowder. I hate to ruin your like polite discourse, but fuck you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for putting that on display for the yeah, whole world. You're fucking scum. Literally. Okay. Steven Crowder is a conservative comedian who started by simply sharing his political leanings in a comedic fashion. What originally was a modest beginning grew into louder with Crowder the largest conservative podcast on the planet. This is the time. People are aware of how corrupt the media is, and there's a void, and we are going to take it back. His ability to speak on serious topics with such fervor and hilarity drew in a cult-like following that even CNN would fancy. His fiery political debates inspired one of the most popular YouTube segments of all time called Change My Mind. Who would like to go and have a word with the protesters and see what issue it is that they have? His controversial stances have been so diametrically opposed to the left-leaning Silicon Valley that his own channel got demonetized for a year after a spat with Vox News' Carlos Maza. The Vox apocalypse has been the excuse we've needed all along. Any channel that even so much as broaches controversial subjects, they're gone. Love or hate Steven Crowder, you can't deny that he has left his mark on the social media space forever. Imagine my shock. Number two, Paul Joseph Watson. And I know the phrase, the world's gone mad, is a massive boomer cliche, but Jesus Christ. Paul Joseph Watson is a contrarian conservative and conspiracy theorist who works for InfoWars' Alex Jones. He has become identified with the internet meme, Imagine my shock! While originally documenting his progress as a news analyst, he points out the blatant corruption from both sides of the political spectrum. His shock and awe style rants garner millions of views, but have drawn the ire of Silicon Valley oligarchs who have deemed his content too shocking for the general public to stomach, leading to his termination on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. The message is clear. Don't have controversial opinions or you will be punished. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not here to make videos about kittens. PJW's battle for the hearts and minds of common sense conservatives and liberals alike have made him a force in the culture war that will make him paramount for the years to come. Before we reveal who our number one pick is, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and of course share this content. While you're at it, let me know what your top 10 list is in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Here are a few honorable mentions of other or former YouTubers who didn't quite make the list because either all out removal, infrequency of posting, or just sitting on the cusp. Gavin McInnes. We love you, I love you too. Wait, that's a guy. (laughs) That was a guy who just said that. The way he handles hecklers. Get him out of here. Go back home to mommy. <laughs> She's so funny. Milo Yiannopoulos. Hi, madam. I've never met before. Are you a white nationalist? No, you don't do that. Well, um, you're doing it because you want to suggest that there is something nefarious about my uh, belief system. You're doing it because you want to associate my uh, admiration for American ideals, my admiration for what happens in, you know, in America and saying that matters everywhere else, freedom, democracy, property, capital. You want to sort of associate that with race. I never did that. You did that. Alex Jones. For, that's they fucking free. did it, That Bravo. is the craziest and shit you ever. you can't fucking admit they're fucking killing already more kids. <laughs> so you're telling me it isn't real when they had a fucking vote in the goddamn fucking Senate. Number one, Salty Cracker. It's been a roller coaster ride of pure adrenaline every day. A new face in the YouTube space, Salty Cracker. His incendiary style packs a prolific punch to communist far-left radicals worldwide. His mission? 
to do everything in his power from having communism take foot in the United States of America. When we point out that this is a weaponized, militarized, paramilitary wing of the Democrat Party, and it's not anything about love, we get harassed, we get silenced. Well, screw you, we're gonna keep yelling about these people. Family members of his had died under the foot of communism is what drives him. His iconic laugh and weekly re-stream where he dunks on the lefties is comedy gold. It's my body, my choice, and I need my Stridex pads to be covered by Obamacare. <laughs> His numbers have grown drastically under the banner of the Salty Army. To be clear, Salty doesn't mince words with no commies, and Alica blams them back to next week. What do you guys think of my list? Drop your own top 10 list down in the comment section below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Coltrane. Choo -choo!